everyone. Let's work through problem E25-7, which uh, deals with net present value, internal rate of return, and the modified internal rate of return. The problem appears in yellow before you. Case Company can invest in three different cheese-making projects, which they've labeled C1, C2, and C3. Now, each project requires, a, we've got a typo, an initial investment of 190000 and it would yield the following cash flows that you can see in this center area of the yellow portion of your screen. Okay, then we have what's required appearing down below. Assuming that the company requires a 12% return from its investments, use net present value to determine which projects should be Acquired. And again, I have another typo. I'll take care of that. Two, using the answer from one above, explain whether the internal rate of return is higher or lower than 12% for Project C2. And the third part would be to compute the, uh, the internal rate of return uh, on the project. Okay, let me show you how I would solve this using Excel. I'd put in year zero for the initial cash outlay, and we know it's 190000 for all periods. Okay, so I've added that to the problem. And then I would also type in the appropriate uh, rate, and I would enter that as just 12%. And I'm going to duplicate it just so we have the information in one column. Then. Let's figure out the first part, the net present value. I'm going to use Excel's NPV function. Now, as soon as I hit that, you can see it's going to ask for the parameters. You can also go up to the formula bar and get a nice functions argument, which I think works pretty nice. So the rate appears in that cell, and then the values are the periods starting from the end of the first year going into the future so that it goes that far. Once we have that, that's going to compute the net present value assuming we're starting at the end of year one. But we need to add something to that. We also know that we have to back out the initial cash outlay that occurs right now. Okay? So you want to make sure you enter that outside of the NPV formula, otherwise it would assume that no cash is, no cash outlay is made until the end of year one, but by putting it outside the NPV and subtracting that negative, it will calculate it as if the payment is made now. Alright, and that's our, our answer for NPV. N NPV. We can simply copy that over and get the results for all three projects. Um, Let's also take care of answering the internal rate of return. And again, using Excel, there's an IRR function. I'll click up here so you can see the parameters. We show the values. Now, with internal rate of return, we can just simply highlight the cash flows by year. Since IRR computes the, if you will, the effective, the rate at which all of those cash flows equate to a zero NPV value. It doesn't matter whether the first one um, occurs now or at the end of year one. The answer would still be the same. Okay, and then it wants you to come up with a guess because IRR does have some problems with the formula where you can get more than one answer depending on, uh, on, on where you start, I believe. So if I enter that, I get an IRR of uh, 9.7. Okay, let's take a look at the second one. Copying over, we get a 12.7. And uh, and in the third one, we get a, an internal rate of return of 16 point now. Now, I know this isn't asked for in the problem, but let's also compute what's called the modified internal rate of return. Now, the modified in in internal rate of return 
is like the internal rate of return, but it changes one of the assumptions. It assumes that any positive cash flows that are received as a result of this project, they get invested at an appropriate rate rather than being invested at the internal rate of the project. So that's a big change in the in the assumption being used by internal rate of return. That formula is MIRR. And we're going to highlight the same values. Okay, let's hit the function argument, the formula bar to get this up. So there's the values appearing in those cells right there. And now the finance rate is our 12%. And we will assume that the reinvestment rate is the same. Okay, so we get a little bit different value for modified internal rate of return. And if I copy those over, we now have come up with the quantitative measures that we can use to evaluate this capital budgeting uh, opportunity or these capital budgeting opportunities and see which ones are correct. Now to answer the questions, um, we've we've which on one it says which ones should be acquired. Well, using NPV, these two are positive. That tells us that. Um, those interested in this project will yield a return higher than a 12% rate because it's generating a net present value. So we should go ahead and accept project C2 and 63, but we should not go ahead with project C1 because we will not earn enough of a return. And in fact, we'll earn a 9.7% return if we were valuing it using internal rate of return, but not quite as bad if we were using the modified internal rate of return. On project C2 and C3, you see that on project C2, we're slightly ahead of our 12% rate, so it is a mildly um, profitable or favorable project to pursue. And C3, with the highest NPV, also shows us we get the highest internal rate of return and uh, a high modified in internal rate of return as well. Okay, so that takes care of number one. Number two says explain whether the internal rate of return is higher or lower than 12% for project C2. Well, it's higher. We can see that 12.7% is greater than 12%, but just looking at the end pr net present value, if it's positive, we know we're above 12%. I think that question is, uh, is, is relatively straightforward. And then the third one was compute the internal rate of return on project C2. Well, we computed them on all of those. So I hope this demonstration has been beneficial.